talk about uh, the regulation of low blood pressure the regulation of low blood osmotic pressure now when do we have low blood osmotic pressure by having low osmotic blood pressure it means that our blood contains a lot of water or there is high level of water in the body that is when we have the low blood osmotic pressure in such a scenario whereby the blood contains a lot of water and thus having low blood osmotic pressure the hypothalamus will produce less antidiuretic hormone or which we call vasopressin the antidiuretic hormone because it is less the conducting ducts are going to become less permeable to water meaning that they will only allow less water to be reabsorbed into the body this means that the urine that is going to be produced is going to be less concentrated urine therefore it becomes hypotonic to blood it is less concentrated than blood so this is how the low blood osmotic pressure is controlled or regulated when we have a lot of water in the body when we take a lot of water into the body the blood becomes saturated with a lot of water and the osmotic pressure osmotic pressure of the blood goes down when it goes down the hypothalamus which is in the brain will produce less vasopressin which is the antidiuretic hormone when less vasopressin is produced the conducting collecting ducts will produce or will become less permeable to water meaning that there is going to be less reabsorption of water from the urine back into the blood therefore the urine that is going to be produced is going to be less and less concentrated compared to the blood and therefore we call it hypotonic blood or it becomes a hypotonic urine which is hypotonic to the blood now that is the regulation of the low osmotic blood pressure we would like now to look at uh, the osmoregulation in amoeba how does the amoeba carry out the osmoregulation we know that the amoeba is a protozoa it is a unicellular organism that lives in fresh water and uh, the carbon dioxide the urea the uric acid and mineral salts are disposed of mainly by diffusion and uh, this takes place via the cell membrane using the contractile virtue so for the amoeba osmoregulation is through diffusion across the cell membrane by the use of the contractile fracture because it is a unicellular organism now we may ask ourselves what are the sources of what are the sources of water and salts and uh, the loss of water 
and salt from the body. Where do we get the salts? Where do we get the water? And how do we lose the salts and the water? We gain water in the body by the food we eat. We may drink a lot of water. We may take a lot of porridge. We may take a lot of food. All those ones are going to add water to the body. Drinking, taking food, eating, and then also the metabolic activities that take place in the body end up producing water. Salts also are obtained from food. Then how is water lost in the body? Water can be lost from the body by exhaling. If you breathe out, there is moisture that comes out, meaning that you are losing water. And uh, if you sweat, your skin becomes wet. That is a sign that you are losing water from the body. In feces, they are semi-solid meaning that there is water which is lost in that means urine a lot of water is lost so we can lose also salts from the body from urine and sweat so we are saying that we can gain water from drinking eating and metabolic activities we gain salts from the food we eat and we lose water via exhaling. We lose water via sweat, feces, urine, and we lose also salts via sweat and urine. Thank you very much. Next time, stay with us.